I have one week to learn all of C-sharp networking, otherwise I'm failing my semester and getting kicked out of university. Oh, that f hurt my foot. Ha, huh, this will be fun. This particular assignment seems simple enough. I need to create a chat system, so something like Discord. Except it's not simple. Because this entire criteria of every feature that needs to be implemented exists. And it's like five pages long. The man in charge of this monstrosity is Gary. That's not his actual name, by the way. And I'm scared of this man for a number of reasons. Firstly, he always includes this demonic smiley face emoji in his emails. And that's like the only reason. He's actually a really nice guy. So I read through the assignment brief like five times. Yeah, I'm committed. All in hopes that I will understand it better. Which I did, but also didn't. But I can't let that slow me down because I only have seven days. For this particular project, I need to use C-sharp and make the entire networking system. So the best starting point is Visual Studio Empty Console Project. But here is the problem. Section 5 of that really long criteria list I showed earlier specifically says I will need UI. Otherwise, I fail. So to solve that problem, I will be using something called WPF and WinForms, which is basically an easy way to implement an interface into any project. So, it's the next day, and I spent all of yesterday making this UI. And yes, I know it's ugly, but at the same time, I think it's good enough to get me the marks. Plus, there is only six days left, so I feel like this will have to do. Okay, so the actual step one is setting up the networking part. So, here's the thing. I'm poor, and I can't afford to have a server running 24-7. So instead, I'll create a separate application for the server, and a separate application for the client. That way the person testing this thing can just be the host themselves. If that makes sense. Okay, so I did some behind the scenes work, and we should now be able to create an instance of the server, pass in the IP address and port, and then just start it. Oh, actually the client app will also need to do a similar thing, so I'll create an instance, and this time it will be the client instance, and connect to the same IP and port. And well, I'll just run the client, and I'll also add an error message just in case something goes wrong. Now if I press this button, we have a command window open up, and um, okay, cool, yeah, we're connected. Okay, so yesterday I managed to get the main networking part in place, as you just saw. I also managed to get it linked to the UI. So right now, when you launch the app, you can enter a name and connect as that user. You can also disconnect from the server at any point. But unfortunately, we still have this massive list of features I need to add. So, uh, I think let's just get going. Okay, so clearly the first thing I need is a way to send messages. I mean, it's literally a chat system. So here's what I'm thinking. We can use this thing called packets. So basically, a user will type whatever message they want and hit send. Then the system behind the scenes will take the string and convert it into bytes. This will be known as the package. We can then transport this package to the server, which will then distribute it to every connected client. And I guess then we just need a way to display it. Let's test it out. Okay, so it's um, not working. Right, I realized it is actually working, but I forgot that we also need to send it to the client that sent the message, aka yourself. It's a little bit confusing, but basically you also need to see the message that you send, and I wasn't doing that. Another thing that we can really easily add is private messages. The system will work exactly the same. Except the server won't distribute the package to every single client, but only to the one that the message is addressed to. But here's the thing, there is no way to address a message right now. So what I did is I created a user list on the side right here that would display every connected user. That way you can just simply press a user on the side that you want to send the message to and just type the message as normal. And if we hit send, you can see the message has been sent. Yay! Only that person has received it as well, which is, which is good. Okay, so another part of that really long criteria list asks me to create different ways to send messages. What this means is I need the ability to use different protocols. Right now, I am using something called TCP to send messages. Basically, all you need to know is that this method is slow, but also secure. So to please the examiners and Gary, I will also create a method to use UDP to send messages. That way, I'm hoping by having two different protocols, I will get the marks. So to use UDP, I will just create a new listener, get it ready to receive data, and then use it to send the messages. I will also create a button to be able to switch between the two protocols. And now if I type a message, we are currently using TCP to send it. But if I click this button and now send the message, we can see it's sent via UDP. Now, while we are talking about security, I also need to add some. 
For this, I will add some basic encryption. Now, at its most basic level, encryption is the process of protecting information or data by using mathematical models to scramble it in such a way to support it. Basically, we're going to take the message that someone sends, scramble it up, and once our server receives it, we will have a key to descramble it. So this is my simple encrypt and decrypt function. And the thing is, I don't always want to send encrypted messages, so I will also add a checkbox and only do it when this is ticked. So now if I type a message and hit send, we can see it's encrypted. Okay, so the chat system is working. But for some reason, Gary is demanding that this project has some sort of game in it. Like why? Now for my game, I would just add RPS. Rock, paper, scissors. It's probably the oldest game known to man. In my opinion, it's the best game ever. And some people think nothing will ever top it. But at this moment in time, I hate it. I dislike it. And in fact, I despise it. Okay, so I got the entire game working. <laughs> now you can play against someone, lose, draw, win, and whatnot. And here is how it works. I created a new screen just for the game. I then added a feature that lets players join the game. Once two users are in, the game will automatically start. Each player can choose either rock, paper, or scissors. And once both choices are made, the program determines who won and kicks both players out. The actual RPS game has a few packets that are used to determine what to do. Firstly, we have a join packet that handles joining, the actual game packet that handles the game itself, and finally the reset packet that resets the game. Okay, so I just woke up and it's the last day. And I still need to add this thing called a graphical solution, which is worth 15 marks. Now just for context, this is a lot. Now originally I was going to add a feature where users can upload images and others can view them, so some sort of gallery thing. But I'm not sure if that's going to give me the full marks. So instead I now have 24 hours to implement a painting application. The idea is that users will be able to paint on a shared canvas. This means that if I draw something, others will be able to see it too. And to be honest, I have no idea how to do that or where to start. <laughs> right. Okay, so after some thinking, I think I know how I will do this. For starters, I created this new screen where the painting will take place. I also added some buttons that will represent the different colours and line thicknesses. I then created a packet called Paint that will handle the painting data. So to be honest, there is a few things that we need to know about any stroke that a person makes on the canvas. Firstly, it's the colour and thickness, which is fairly straightforward. But then we also need to know its position on the canvas. So for this, I need to know where it begins and where it ends. So we can represent that data with x pos 1, x pos 2, y pos 1, and y pos 2. Then once a stroke is made, we can send this data to the server, and the server will then distribute it to every connected client. So I have this method here that will draw a line with the data that it receives. I should mention that this drawing thing right now only works with straight lines, I know that's a bit scuffed and it's not exactly painting or drawing, but hopefully I think it should be enough for full marks. So let's test it out. Okay, so yes, it works. I can now draw stuff and others can also see it, and the different colours and strokes also work. Okay, so um, I guess let's just uh, submit this project and see uh, how we do. Hey, so it's actually been like a month, maybe a little longer since you saw that last part. But I got an email this morning saying that the results are in, so I figured let's check it out and I'll show it in the video. Okay, so if we actually go onto the course itself and look at the assignment submission... Oh my gosh, okay, I got 91%, which is actually very good because it's out of 100 and I'm more than happy with that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I passed, I'm not getting kicked out of university or anything like that, so um... I think, yeah, that this is the end of the video, guys. So if you enjoyed, please like, subscribe and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.